One of the dudes who killed Young Dolph finally went to trial, but nobody knew how crazy it was gonna get. Some shocking new info came out that could really turn up the streets of Memphis, and today we're breaking the whole thing down. Justin Johnson, aka Straight Drop, went on trial for being one of the dudes who pulled the trigger on Young Dolph back in 2021. Straight Drop and a dude named Cornelia Smith pulled up on Dolph while he was buying cookies at Makita's homemade cookies in Memphis and started letting off shots. After the hit went down, Straight Drop did the race and hit out in Indiana, but the cops tracked him down in 2022 and brought him back to Memphis. Before the trial started, there were all kinds of rumors going around about why Dolph got killed, but then Cornelia Smith took the stand to testify and shocked everyone. When the prosecutor opened the case, he started off by telling the jury that young Dolph got killed because Yo Gotti's brother Big Juke put 100k on his head. Straight Drop wanted to be signed to Yo Gotti CMG label, and that's why a dude named Hernandez Govan put Straight Drop on the hit. Govan was tight with Big Juke and helped CMG find new rappers for the label. And after Juke put the hit out, Govan set it up and got Straight Drop and Cornelia Smith to pull the trigger. Straight Drop wanted to get his clout up and sign a deal with CMG, and Govan knew Cornelia Smith was addicted to drugs and needed money, cause Govan was the one selling the drugs to him. On the first day of the trial, Cornelia Smith flipped on Straight Drop and told everything. They played surveillance footage of the hit going down, and Cornelia Smith identified himself and Straight Drop as the shooters. What a lot of people didn't know before the trial is that young Dolph's brother Marcus was with him at the cookie shop that day. Dolph and Marcus pulled up in Dolph's Corvette and went inside, but they had no idea that Straight Drop and Cornelia Smith were already following them. According to Cornelia Smith, they knew Dolph was going to be in town because it was close to Thanksgiving and he always gave out free turkeys to people who couldn't afford to buy their own. The plan was to catch Dolph at the turkey drive and kill him there, but while Straight Drop and Smith were driving around, they spotted Dolph's Corvette and started following him. Right after Dolph and Marcus walked into the cookie shop, Straight Drop and Cornelia Smith pulled up and hopped out of their stolen Mercedes. Cornelia Smith started letting off shots with a Draco, and Straight Drop was right behind them shooting with a pistol. They blew out the windows of the cookie shop and hit Dolph over 20 times, but Dolph's brother Marcus started shooting back at them. Marcus emptied the clip in his pistol, then he ran outside and grabbed another strap from Dolph's whip while Straight Drop and Smith were driving off. Marcus hit both of them, but Straight Drop and Cornelia Smith knew they couldn't go to a hospital. Cornelia Smith said he didn't feel nothing at the time and that he was just trying to get some money. He said that his son had died just a few months before he killed Dolph, and he had been using drugs to deal with the loss. Hernandez Govan was the one selling drugs to Cornelia Smith, and he knew that Cornelius needed money to feed the addiction. What makes the situation even more shocking is that Cornelia Smith killed young Dolph on his own daughter's birthday. Cornelia said, man, I was trying to make it right for her. I ain't had no money. I'm trying to get some money that day, so I'm trying to make sure my baby girl have a beautiful birthday. Cornelia Smith said he didn't really start talking about what he did till he got arrested and sobered up in jail. That's when the situation actually got to him, and he decided to flip and tell the cops everything about what went down. After Straight Drop and Cornelia Smith killed Dolph, Straight Drop FaceTimed Big Juke and spelled out Dolph's name in sign language, so Juke would know they were the ones who took him out. Big Juke was supposed to pay Hernandez Govan 20k for setting the hit up, and Straight Drop and Cornelius were both supposed to get 40k each, but Cornelius said that he only got $800 for the hit. Cornelius Smith said that he met up with Hernandez Govan that day, while Straight Drop was supposed to get the money. Hernandez Govan knew that Cornelius had been shot and left blood at the scene, and he asked him if they had masks on when they killed Dolph. Later that same day, Hernandez Govan pulled up on Cornelius again, and Cornelius Smith asked him for money to buy pills. Cornelius Smith and Straight Drop dished the stolen Mercedes at an abandoned house across the street from where Hernandez Govan lived. Then Straight Drop went on the run and had his brother Jamarcus help him out. Jamarcus pleaded guilty to being an accessory after the fact and testified against his own brother during the trial. Jamarcus said that he didn't know anything about the murder, but that Straight Drop hit him up right after it went down. Jamarcus was working at a warehouse and didn't have a car, but Straight Drop called him and said he was giving him a whip so he could get to work without having to ask other people for rides. When Jamarcus met up with Straight Drop, Straight Drop gave him a phone and told Jamarcus he wanted him to post a couple things on Instagram for him. Jamarcus didn't know what was going on, but he took the phone anyway. While Straight Drop was on the run, Jamarcus was the one talking to Cornelius Smith on the phone Straight Drop gave him. Cornelius kept talking about getting money from Unc, and it turns out that he was talking about Big Jook. Straight Drop was telling Cornelius Smith the situation was too hot for them to get the money yet though. According to Cornelius, he'd only met Big Jook once before the shooting went down. Cornelius Smith said he linked up with Hernandez Govan and Big Jook at Jook's crib, and that's where they started planning everything. After Dolph got killed, Big Jook only paid Cornelius Smith $800 and told him to come up with a good alibi if he got caught up in the case. There were rumors that Yo Gotti and Big Jook were connected to Dolph's case from the jump. Dolph had been beefing with them for years, and they'd already tried to kill him twice. 
a dude who worked as Dolph's security also testified at Straight Drop's trial and confirmed all the rumors about Dolph's beef with Yo Gotti and Big Joke were true. It all basically started because Gotti wanted to sign Dolph to CMG, but Dolph made his own lane and stayed independent. Then they started dissing each other back and forth, and CMG tried to kill Dolph twice. The prosecutors even brought up Dolph's track 100 shots during the trial. Dolph's whip got hit up over 100 times while he was in North Carolina, and after it went down, he dropped the track 100 shots and rapped, 100 shots, 100 shots, how the fuck you miss a whole 100 shots? Then one of Gotti's affiliates got arrested for shooting Dolph in Los Angeles a few months later. The dude ended up getting set free without catching any charges, but everybody knew that Dolph's beef with Gotti and CMG was deeper than rap. After Dolph got killed in 2021, the medical examiner found bullet fragments all over his body, but some of them are old pieces that never got taken out. It's not clear if they're from when Dolph got shot in LA though, and some people think CMG might have tried to kill him even more times than everyone knew about. Straight drop getting snitched on by Cornelia Smith and his own brother was bad for his case, but the cops already had a ton of evidence on him. Security cameras caught Straight Drop leaving his apartment in the same clothes and whip that he used during the hit, and after they killed Dolph, Straight Drop was spotted on another camera going to his cousin's apartment to change clothes, then going straight back to his own place to pack his bags and leave town. The night before Dolph got killed, Straight Drop linked up with some dudes at a gas station and picked up the stolen Mercedes he used for the hit. A dude named Kissin Gardner also testified and said he was the one who gave Straight Drop the Mercedes. Kissin Gardner didn't know it was about to go down though, and he told the court that young Dolph was like family. The cops also had cell phone evidence that proved Straight Drop was around the gas station where he got the Mercedes, his apartment, and the shop where they killed Dolph. Plus, the records confirmed that Straight Drop had FaceTimed Big Chuck right after the hit went down. During the prosecution's closing arguments, they laid out the whole situation for the jury. Big Chuck put 100k on Dolph's head, and Hernandez Govan helped him set it up and brought Straight Drop and Cornelia Smith into the situation. After Straight Drop and Cornelia Smith agreed to pull the trigger on Dolph, they spent two weeks planning the hit. According to Cornelius, Big Chuck actually had a bag on anyone's head from Dolph's label PRE, but Dolph was the top op. They had Cornelius Smith's testimony, videos from security cameras, and phone records to back it all up. At the end of the day, it only took the jury four hours to come back and decide that Straight Drop was guilty. The judge hit him with a life sentence for murdering young Dolph, and he's gonna get even more time added to that because Straight Drop still has other charges that haven't been handled yet. People thought Hernandez Govan and Cornelius Smith would be part of the same trial as Straight Drop but the district attorney decided to handle all three cases separately. Cornelia Smith and Hernandez Govan could both end up getting life sentences too, but Big Juke got killed before the cops could get to him. In January 2024, Big Juke got killed right after he went to his uncle Eric Bovan's funeral. Big Juke was outside of a Perignon's restaurant and event center in Memphis when some shooters rolled up and killed him in broad daylight. Big Juke and Yo Gotti had a lot of power in Memphis, and their uncle, Eric Bovan, aka Las Vegas, was one of the biggest drug dealers in the city. He was making millions back in the day running drugs from California to Memphis, but his whole crew got taken down back in the 80s after one of them flipped and started working with the FBI. Big Juke and Yo Gotti allegedly followed their uncle into the streets and were making money in the drug game way before they got into music. Gotti's had beef with a lot of rappers in the game, but it seemed like he hated Dolph more than anyone. Dolph was also in the streets before he started rapping, and rumors say he used to sell weight to Big Juke. Then after Gotti and Dolph started beefing, Dolph ditched Juke and Gotti on the track play with your bitch and rapped, Don't play with me, ho Gotti, you a ho, man. You went from my biggest fan to my biggest hater, begging me to sign with you, but I had too much paper. Still that same nigga that used to front your big brother. Found out he a bitch too, now I call him your big sister. And stay in your place, homie, you know what's up with me. Tell your fat ass big brother, man, I said he a bitch too. Matter of fact, your big sister. Tell your fat ass big sister that I said he a bitch too. Right after Dolph died, one of his homies even hopped on social media and claimed that Big Juke is the one who put the bag on his head. I said, if I see Juke, if I see Gotti, if I see, if I see, uh, if I see Migo, if I see Young Star, shit ain't got nothing to do with nobody else, bro. I said, if I see them folk, because these folk got some, had something to do with it, bro. These folk, the juke put a hit out. You know what I'm saying, boo? Nah, fuck it, bro. I need to say that. Don't say that. Nigga, tell the truth. Say, man, hey, bro, how you gonna feel if I told you? Hey, man, look, bro. My juke put a forty thousand dollar hit on you, bro. Like, you, hey, come on, bro. I'm standing on there. I ain't no, I ain't, uh, bro. I'm not no shake nars on my head. After Juke got killed, a lot of people thought Dolph's homies were sliding for him, but the situation might be way more complicated than that. On the last post Big Juke made on Instagram before he died, he said. They don't want to face you, they want to snake you. Stay alert to stay alive. Watch your back at all times. And after Cornelia Smith confirmed that Big Joke is the one who paid for the Dolph hit, 
rumors have been flying that someone on Juk's side took him out before he could get questioned by the police. Some people even think Yo Gotti and his own brother killed to keep himself safe, but there's not enough evidence to back the story up. Gotti's name wasn't mentioned much during Straight Drop's trial, and it's not clear if he even knew about the bag that Big Juk had on Dolph's head. But even if Gotti knew about the situation, it doesn't mean he's the one who put a green light on Dolph. Right now, there's nothing linking Gotti to the case. But when Hernandez Govan goes on trial, more info could come out about the whole situation. Hernandez Govan was allegedly tight with Yo Gotti too, and if Gotti was involved with the situation, there's a good chance that Hernandez will flip on Gotti to try and get a deal. Right now, Hernandez Govan is facing a life sentence if he gets convicted, so a lot of people think he'll tell the cops anything he knows, just like Cornelius Smith did. And now that everybody knows that Juke paid for the Dolph hit, the streets in Memphis might get even crazier. Young Dolph had a lot of love in the city, and definitely have people on his side that would want to get back for his death. Hopefully it's not how it goes down though, because the city has already lost way too many people over the situation.